Roxo Media House. Jeff Wilson started covering the Texas Rangers in 2008, though he'll never forget 2021. Out on his own, he decided it was time to do a podcast, but his wheels were spinning until a nerd came along. There's no going back now. Welcome to the Texas Rangers Baseball Podcast. Here's your host, Jeff Wilson, and the recliner nerd himself, John Moore. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Texas Rangers Baseball Podcast. This is episode number 38, and today... Bubba Thompson, or Leslie A. Thompson, the, the fourth, fourth, yeah, uh, something like that. Bubba's going to be joining us. I think they're in Wichita, aren't they? Uh, they're in Kansas. Uh, I don't know where they are, but they're not home. They're not home. Um, no, wait, no, 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 wait. Round Rock. I'm thinking of Frisco's in Wichita. So anyway, Bubba's going to be joining us here via Zoom shortly, but we got to get into this Texas Ranger All team right. right now. Uh, 500. 500. 24 and 24. This is... You know, I looked up something. This is what impresses me about the the 24 and 24 that we're seeing right now. Uh, Power Ranking Guru looked it up. As of right now, this far into the season, the Texas Rangers have had the hardest schedule in Major League Baseball, and they're 500. Yeah, that makes sense. So for Ranger fans that are all upset and all of that, this is a 500 team that's played the hardest schedule in MLB. It's only going to get easier from here. Well, we say it's only (laughs) going to get easier from here, but this is a team playing well. Yeah, yeah, and you know they might have caught some teams at, at a good time. Uh, they might have caught some teams at a bad time, like you know the the, the Mariners, for instance, are right. are uh, in in last place. But when the Rangers played them earlier in the season, that's where the season turned around. They were two and nine. Right. They were down five nothing in the first inning at Seattle. They ended up winning that game. The next one, and then that's where their turnaround started. But uh, yeah, I mean a lot of a lot of Angels and Astros, two two of the better teams in the league. They played the Yankees. Uh, you know the Red Sox. I, I, I keep saying our better team than their record indicates yeah uh but then you look at the schedule coming up you know uh they finish the race series they get seattle uh they go to cleveland who's below 500 chicago who's injured below 500 right uh and then, then they do have a series against the astros <clears throat> but then it's like they go to kansas city you know and then they they play the phillies and the nationals who are below 500 and then and you get into the the new year to have a, a season at the or new month they have a season to start July with the Mets then they go to Baltimore Baltimore is not a good team so they have a chance they're getting a break on their schedule they have a chance to, to capitalize on it yeah and and to to maybe get above 500 and, sure. and maybe put themselves in in contention make the front office think about adding adding pieces but they can't play down to the level of competition which no. I think you've seen sometimes but exactly but there's no doubt that this team is playing good, and anybody who thinks that they aren't is is stuck in 2020 and 2021. You know, you, it's time to it's time to take a take a deep breath and enjoy the good because this is good right now. It, right. it may not last, but it's good right now. Look, coming into this, I've had a couple of arguments on Twitter, which are fun to have. By oh, the way, you love Lord. to have these arguments on Twitter about who the ace of the staff is. Up until a couple of weeks ago, I was always saying, "Look, John Gray's still the ace of this staff. That's who mm. they brought in to be the ace. Yep. He's got a look. He's not a true ace, but for this staff." He was the ace. He's the one they signed to the deal. That's no longer the case, thanks to this guy right here. And we got to talk about Martin Perez. Sure. Um, You and I, last week I brought up that I thought he had a chance to win AL uh, Pitcher of the Month. uh, for, And I think we Verlander was ahead of him in the stats and what was going on. Verlander's a more well-known name. Verlander got rocked for six runs the other night, uh, took a loss. There's no way, right? There's, right. Unless it's Cortez. Right. Cortez is the no. only guy they could even nope. do. Nope. Nope. But, nope. Nope. But nope. if they nope. do Cortez, there is a total bias if it ends <laughs> up being Cortez because he plays for the Yankees. Well, it, it would just be <clears> – <throat> it wouldn't be a bias. It would be an ignorance. You know, yes, an, an ignorance. Ignorant. There you go. Um, but, you know, I, I vote for player of the month, pitcher of the month. You get a packet of the guys who are, you know, in the top ten categories, has everybody's stat, all the big stats. There's no way that Martin Perez isn't going to get I mean, it's just there's just no way, and you know, and and uh, okay, so May four and zero, so we tied for the American League lead in wins, zero six four ERA in May, right? For, first uh, in the league, I'm assuming he's first in baseball at that point. Um, I think he had the second most innings pitched, fifty five innings. The, he pit he he started six games and the Rangers won them all. Yep. You know that 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 tells you what you need to know about what Martin Perez has done for this team, and uh, I think the opponents average is somewhere around one ninety five. <laughs> so um look he he was getting knocked around uh tuesday night yeah and and he took the ball off the shin and that kind of like woke him up 
and he made an adjustment. I mean, the, 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 he did what a veteran pitcher does. He didn't. Yep. He wasn't stubborn like Lance Lynn would have been. Right. He made an adjustment, and and you know the the Rays were looking for pitches outside and trying to hit him up the middle in the right field. All right, so he started pitching inside and then retired the last sixteen batters he faced. So, uh, the the guy for four million dollars has been just an absolute bargain. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you start extension talk. You know, if, if you know it's ten starts, he's got he's got twenty twenty two left to go, but he's put himself in a position at least. Yeah, he's put himself in a position, and I'll tell you this much: he's put himself in a position that it would have to it would have to take a major good package to pry him away from the Rangers I think I think the Rangers I mean they're talking at trade deadline that he would mm. be an odd obviously he would be valued to somebody if the Rangers who I think will be hanging around that wild card spot you know I, they have a chance to look you've talked about what's coming yeah. up on the schedule they certainly have a chance to to hang around there they're not going to be eager to get rid of the best pitcher on the staff if he continues what he's doing um unless they're blown away by a package so they're 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 not going to do that. I, so he's just set himself up perfectly for that. Yeah. If he continues through that, yeah, you can talk, and I bet they could get him for a decent deal to stay for another two or three years. Uh, get him in here for ten a year or something like that. Yeah. And look, if that's the back end of your rotation um, going forward, you still could sign an ace this off season um, in somebody that's coming open. But you know, okay, Martin, we talk about that's easy to get right behind you. Somebody made his major league debut the other night. Yeah, Josh Smith uh, had him on the show. Uh, getting smithy with it if you guys haven't heard that one it's fantastic a um, lot of fun him and his wife do social media you need to go watch that what a debut what a good kid and sure. uh look uh, i think the writing's on the wall for abanez they i mean he took a 40-man spot they got rid of the brayu for him yeah. because they wanted to see what was happening what a great debut Right, three hits, uh, scored a couple runs. Um, not, not you know, three singles. That's fine. Um, yeah. You know, guys, other guys have had better debuts that come to mind. You know, Nomar Mazzara and sure. and Joey Gallo of late. But um, for him to step in and and to do that, um, it shows that he can handle the situation. Right. That he he's not uh, you know some kid who's caught up in in everything. He wants to get out there and compete and play well. And uh, you know he's he's playing a position third base that. He'd never played before. You know, he played shortstop almost exclusively last year. I think he had one game at second base. Right. And this year, it, you know, the Rangers signed Simeon and Seeger. So shortstop's got to got to learn how to play somewhere else. And third base, you know, it's the same side of the diamond. Uh, balls come at you sooner, sure. There's some trickier spin. I get it. But he's got the arm to get the ball across the infield. Uh, Showed that last he, night. He's going he's gonna to have the range. And, and you know, another thing, he can maybe play center field. So, yeah. No. Um, it's time to it's time to see these guys. I think you know if if there is a guy who isn't performing at the major league level, and there is a there is a person who in AAA is performing. Let's take a look. I mean, if if the goal is to win now, yes. I mean the goal has been to win. But if if they think they're a contender, then they can't be carrying these guys that that aren't going to produce. They're taking up a, a right. roster spot and they don't have any value. And we said this last week. We love Andy Abanya as the kid, and he ha he did have a nice series at Oakland. You he know? did, yeah. He had that pinch hit, two-run single on a Friday night that, that put the yeah. Rangers ahead. You know, Chris Chris Woodward sent him up to pinch hit, a guy who was like two for 43. Right. Gave him like a vote of confidence, and he responded. Then he had two uh, multi-hit games on, on Saturday and Sunday. But the fact of the matter is the numbers still aren't there. So, uh, you know, e Eli White, who had the amazing catch, oh my great gosh. game in the same game that Smith debuted, he's still hitting under 200. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, you're you're talking about guys who who might be taking taking spots, spots that that that, that could go to people who could help the team a little more. Look, they they put Smith on a forty. They gave him a forty man spot. Right. He didn't come up here on a forty man spot to play right until uh, uh, Miller's healthy and then shooting back down, unless he starts hitting one hundred and can't. <clears> you know, <throat> he's making errors or whatever, and then you do move him back to Triple A. They brought him up here because they want to see what he's got. They loved what he did in spring training. Had a great spring training. Unbelievable. Yeah. They were unbelievable spring training. Um, and he may not be the best guy that was in that trade. If we're watching, we're going to get into that later. What Duran's doing down at Double A, but Josh Smith ha has not looked like you said. He doesn't have the deer in the headlight looks. He looks great. We got to talk about the catch. I I'm sorry that I saw Gary Matthews Jr.'s. I was at the game. Mm. Gary Matthews Jr.'s made that catch in center field at the old at the old stadium. 
That's the best catch I've ever seen in person. And yeah. and, and that one, he didn't have it tracked. So he came and he kind of did the swipe at it when he got it. Yeah, it was an amazing like catch. Yeah. Mike Lamb was the one hitting for Houston uh, doing that. But that last night, uh, sorry, not last night, two nights night. ago, Tuesday nights. It's it's Wednesday morning, by the way. Um, so that, that was, was one of most Monday that's night. one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, yeah. Going up, the way he went over, how he didn't fall over, I don't know. He you know kept the, the lower half there, but he. <laughs> I think the 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 proper question to ask was asked right away when they got to him. Can you dunk a basketball? Because that's <laughs> an amazing leap that he took. He said he has a forty inch vertical. I know it. That's or that's the testing or you know, the pressure plates, whatever it is in the lab, the performance lab, right? Top secret lab, um, forty inch vertical. So that's that's like NFL defensive back, right? Stuff. That's that's basketball player stuff. And the Rangers have said for a long time that Eli White's their best athlete. And 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 if if he's not, then it's then it's Bubba Thompson who's going to be our guest here in a second. Right. But um, wow, what a catch, you know. And and he was. His, his whole torso was above the wall. Yes. And uh, that's a six-foot wall. So, I mean, he elevated. And, and you know, it changed the game. I mean, it saved – it, it was three runs. That yeah, was going to be the yeah. first inning. Three right. runs. Right. And, you know, maybe Leody Tavares makes that catch because Leody's a, a heck of an outfielder, too. Right. He made a similar play in, in 2020 on a Justin I'm not sure Turner ball. sure does. I don't think Adolis does. Um, anyway, great catch. Play of the year so far, probably defensively in baseball. What a game for him! Uh, and, and yeah, and he hit the two run homer. Great game and Had the some, bunt single. Something, something he needed. Something he needed. But again, he's he's a guy that's teetering there. And, right. And you know, Leo Tavares can play really good defense and can probably do a lot more offensively. Right. And we're going to get into it when we go to Round Rock. I want to talk about the whole story that that you know uh, Rex came back up um, instead of Tavares. So I'm mm-hmm. going to get into that. And we know uh, we're talking to Chris about that. Um, but. Going forward at 24 and 24, they got two more games with the Rays, which, you know, look, win one more of these. I think from here on out, you got to win series to keep going. Sure. But this is a fun team to watch for anybody that that that, that has, you know, they start out two and nine, and it, what what happens? Right away, it's it, it, it all the, the – Doom and uh, gloom. Yeah. Oh, doom and gloom. Fire this, the manager. Oh, that the manager, yeah. the, the, this team, the ownership only cares about money. They don't care. They don't – you know, after yeah. 500-something million dollars. You know, one th- quick thing before we get Bub on here, going back to Josh Smith, a lot of the argument now is what's going to happen with Young. First of all, he's not coming back this year except possibly DH, and he's not going to probably be in the big leagues at all from the injury. Maybe. <laughs> There's a chance, depending on – we talked to Ross the other day. Did they say he's getting ready to start swinging the bat? Two to three weeks he'll be swinging a bat and uh, just light swings, you know, nothing nothing too crazy. But uh, probably a mid to late August return, it, sound, it, it sounds like, if you put the pieces together. Um, but, you know, th- this, guy's, this guy is, is a better third baseman than Josh Smith. Exactly. And um, nobody needs to go crazy yet. You know what? Oh God, what's going to happen? You know, what are we going to do with Josh Young? Jo- Josh Young is still the third baseman of right. the future. Um, and, so what is Smith? And that's the question. Well, I mean, the utility he, he, guy. He, he, I mean, you know, Charlie Culberson. I don't think will be on the team next year. No. So there's a utility spot. You can make him a super utility guy. Plays outfield. Yeah, I mean, he can do a lot of things, and uh, but he has to keep it up. I mean, he's you know, this is this is Wednesday. He's played two games. So what? Right? We're we're jumping the gun here. Yeah, two games in, he's not an all star. All right, but. <laughs> You know, maybe he gets traded. You know, honestly, who who knows? But um, he's doing nothing but adding the attraction of Josh sure, Smith. Absolutely. His value has gone up in two games going forward. He did take the ball off the wrist last night when it, that last at bat. You said he was eye stepped afterwards. Yeah, eye stepped afterwards. I'm, I'm going to be but honest. Fine. I think that, he took extra. He's yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. That looked like it hurt. Oh my gosh, the well, way I, his wrist. I think it all. They all look like they hurt. John. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I'm tough. You know, doing that. All right, guys. Listen, we're going to get Bubba Thompson on here uh, right now, and then after that, we got to go down to the bus leagues, talk a little bit about the minor league system. But right. let's get Bubba on here right now. With the 26th selection of the 2017 MLB draft, the Texas Rangers select Bubba Thompson. And now. One nothing pitch. Breaking ball, hit on the ground, third base side and fair. I was a little kid dreaming about this moment and just to be on the the jumbo trying, it's an awesome experience. And I'd like to thank God for everything that, that he put me in. All right, and joining us right now from Round Rock, Texas, it's Texas Rangers outfielder Bubba Thompson. He's joining us. Bubba, what's going on, bud? How are you, thing? It's going good. How about yourself? 
Well, we're, we're doing good. Thank you. Thank you for, for asking. Uh, this is our 38th episode. Uh, I wanted to get you on in the off season. It doesn't work out. So don't be offended that it's, that, that, that it's 38 because, because we wanted you sooner than that. It just it's didn't all, happen. All right. All good, man. It's all good. All right. We hear right, now. So, that's all that matters. So, so you're, uh, you're, you're chilling. You guys played last night. We won't talk about that. Didn't go real good. Although you had two hits, but, um, what, what, what's your living arrangement there? You got a, got, got a nice looking apartment. It looks like, dang. Oh yeah. They put us up pretty good, man. So it was really easy. And, uh, it's been good so far. Who, now, are you rooming with somebody? Uh, Josh Smith. Oh uh, man. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Yep. So, so you got the place yourself. Yeah. As of right now, you know, Perfect. <laughs> you never know. Perfect. That'll work. That'll work. Was it now? Did his wife, was his wife with you? Oh, uh, yep. Yeah, yes, she's sir. a nice gal. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah she they they cool people, good people, man. <laughs> they are good people. So I see uh, he's doing his thing too up there. Oh so yeah, that's good. Good to yeah. see. Mm-hmm. So um, just real real quick, uh, you, you know, your your average is still above three hundred. You're stealing bases like a madman. What what is it that's that's worked for you so far this season? Uh, just the the reps, you know, being focused each and every day. Uh, and really, when I get on base, knowing what the pitcher got, you know, before I get on there, just just so I can take the bag as quick as I can, you know. So, you know, when um, I was talking to Matt Hagen a couple of weeks ago, and uh, you know, I was just kind of running through guys, and and you came up, and he was telling a story. I don't know, you guys might have been in Hickory together, and he was Hickory. talking about how how you got thrown out stealing a base, and then were like hesitant to do it, and he told you. Does does when Steph Curry misses a three pointer, does he stop shooting three pointers? Yeah, you know? man. He always <laughs> he always say that, man. But gotta, that's why we're going through it, you know, to get the reps and, and know what you can do and, not, and can't do, and, and that's how you get better, though, you know. Well, I mean, you know, it. He he also said a, a base hit for you is like a double because you're going to take that base. How much do you love running? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I always been fast, man. It's just good to get out on the bases and, and try to steal on a pitcher and everything. That's that's the fun part of it. But so, it, it's, hard, it's hard to get over there the first. So what I do is it's it's a, it's it's fun, man. Yeah, you can't steal first. Hey, you got that right. You got <laughs> to get on there. So what what, there. what what's your key? What what do you look for? Are you looking for a high leg kick or? Or what, well, it depends. What it? Everybody, you know, just like hitting everybody different. You know, the pitcher got uh, different keys that 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 they do. You know, um, but at the end of the day, if I don't have any keys, man, I just go off my uh, my instincts and, and and when I see the leg or wherever I'm looking at the time, and then I just react. So who who is faster, Bubba Thompson, Leody Tavares, or Eli White? Oh. A lot of people ask me, you know, we we always get these kind of questions, and, and I don't do none of that. I don't, you know, I feel like we all fast, and, and, and I don't try to sell myself to go out here and, and, and run as fast as I can. Let let everything else play out. But so no, you've never you've never raced. Too. You um, guys have never raced. No, nah, we ain't never raced like that for real. the the last two seasons have been really good for you offensively i remember you, you you've told me one of the the funniest lines I've, I've ever heard from a anybody and i've been doing this for a while you said it last year when i interviewed you you said in 2019 bp was hard for me yeah <laughs> and we all know you didn't have a great 2019 so what changed what changed for bubba thompson man just staying healthy man getting that hand back right i feel like you know um and just getting that swing back to where I want and how I feel good, and uh, and just staying healthy, man. Staying on the field and staying consistent, man. That's the main one. Cause every time you step in that box, them pitchers, you know, they good each and every day. Right. Um, it's about getting reps, knowing yourself, and uh, that's about it, man. And well, grinding right, cause, each and every day. Cause 2019, you you had the the broken hammock bone, so you have surgery yeah. for that. Correct, and then and then you come back and play like a week, and you you hurt yourself jumping into the fence. I think is that uh-huh. right? So yeah, yeah, so you miss 
you miss a lot of reps. Maybe you pressed. I don't know. You, you probably had to adjust your swing. I mean, Delino to Shields, God bless him, had the broken hammer bone and, and had to yeah. had to deal with it. Jo Davis Wenzel had it last year. So, yeah, I mean, man. It's, yeah, it's just – man, it's about getting your hand back right because it, it, it's going to get sore on you here and there, you know. It's about going through it and, and – and getting the reps in to where you feel good back again and, and and keep going. So new hitting coaches on the major league side. You you were in you were in big league camp. What what did they what did they tell you and and uh what what like struck a nerve? What made sense and and you you see it here through the first two months of the minor league season? We ain't really um talk too much about hitting when I was out there, you know, um a little bit about approach. Mm. Um, so that's that's one thing I'm I'm kind of working on, you know, that approach and, and what I want to hit, zone it, zoning it down to what I want to hit, you know, each and every day um, in the box. So we didn't really go over no, you know, technique like that. Um, okay. But mainly approach and everything like that, just getting it all toned up. Is, is it toned up? Are you there yet? What do you think? <laughs> well, my approach... Um, uh, it's almost there, man. It's all, it's almost there, but I, I think I'm there. Uh, but it's just focusing in on that one pitch, you know, maybe an inch outside that I can take, you know, instead of hacking at it, just a little mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, no, that takes time. You, and that's, and that's what you're talking about. That's the reps. You gotta, you yeah, gotta for see sure, it. For sure, man. Just seeing different type of pitching, different type of guys, man. And, and like I said, zoning into what I want to hit at that time and where I want it. You know, sure. That's the main thing that's that, that's we're trying to get right now. Uh, another thing, this last off season, you were kind of in no man's land with that Rule Five draft that ended up not happening in the first place. Um, yeah. How much? How much? Now, now that it passed and everything, how much of a weight was it? How much? How much did you think about it in the off season? I mean, I thought about it a lot, man. When I got the call and, and I went on there, you know, I went to thinking and, and what the moves might be and where I might be, and, uh, but everything work out for the best, man. And you got to keep grinding and everything going to work out. You know? You've got a birthday next week? What'd you say? You have a birthday next week? I know it, man. I know it. Yes, sir. 24. Tonight, man. 24, yes, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> you only live once. Let's get it. So, all right. So you're going to be 24. Um, you're, you're at triple A. You're you're right on. You're knocking on the door here. Can you can you sense that that the big leagues is in your near future, or are you just not? Are you just like, hey man, I got to be where I'm at. Oh yeah, man, be where I'm at. But but that's that's the ultimate goal. You know, that's everybody's goal in the minor leagues who's playing this game, grind each and every day. You know, um, but no, nah, man, it'd be a blessing, man. All the hard work, you know. Um, but it's all gonna work out though. You know, you can't look too far. You look too far ahead, you know, you start going down, you know. So you got to stay focused each and every day. What yeah. can I do to help the team win? What can I do to, you know, get myself better each and every day too? So so, okay, so you can steal bases. That helps the team. You can hit home runs. It helps the team. Are you, yeah. you're, you're playing all three outfield spots, right? Yes, sir. I play left from center. Uh, I play right a few games, so. It don't okay. bother me none. You'll play anywhere they're putting. Yeah, well, let's. let's oh yeah, let's you got him. to, man. You got to. Let's let's get him up here. What do you think, John? I'm. I. You know what? I'm. I. If it's my call, I'm ready. All right. All right. <laughs> sounds like sounds like sounds like we got some calls to make, John. <laughs> yeah, let's make. All right. Now look, I asked the baseball questions. You know those hard hitting baseball questions. John here comes in with the the softballs. All right. So he's gonna throw you some softballs. But, the soft uh, balls, soft yeah. balls. The you soft can, balls. You can knock these out of the park. All right. These are all the fun questions. But these are like, this is, these are like, who is Bubba Thompson? I, I am going to test his memory one time. Okay. B Bubba, memory. Bubba, and I. I don't know if Bubba will remember this. He was playing for the Hickory Crawdads in West Virginia, Charleston, West Virginia, playing the West Virginia Power. Power. Do you remember the Toast Man? That's the toast. The Toast Man, yes, sir. <laughs> and you, you, me and my wife sat right next to the dug out there, and you came over. You and Sam Huff came over and said hi and talked to us after game. You may not remember that. That's okay, but do you kind of remember that? 
A little bit, a little bit, man. It's been so, you know, it's been a while. It's been a few years, but the, uh, the Toast Man is everybody remembers the Toast Man. Well, what's the Toast Man? Uh huh. So, West Virginia has a guy that sits right behind home plate. He does his homework, he knows the stat yeah. of every guy on the opposing team. Okay. And every time someone strikes out, he makes toast in a toaster. Oh, my God. And he starts throwing it around. <laughs> And he has he he could bring up Bubba's high school stat. He could bring up everything. He'll just yeah. call you out on anything. He does his homework. That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> he he does. <laughs> he All right. Dig it. Okay, Bubba, we got to talk about. It. So you're you're born and raised in Mobile, Alabama. You went to McGill Tulin High School, Catholic high school. So in there now, you also played football. No, some people we knew that going we into that. it. Yeah. In his senior year, he passed for three thousand one hundred seventy-three yards and thirty-eight TDs in seven A. Now we yeah. only got six A here in Texas, but seven A. So that's the highest yeah. level. How close to you? How close were you to playing football and and committing in football? Man, I was really close. Man, going through the decisions there at the end. Um, this really, really where the decision was made. Like where I go in the draft and everything, you know. So all that had to play out. So if it didn't play out, then I'll probably go somewhere and play both sports, football and baseball. But, you know, I'm blessed to to get the chance to, to play baseball when I was in 2007. Okay, so – I ain't look back yet. <clears throat> what, was the, what was the threshold? Like, if you were not a first – was it like – the first three rounds, you're like, all right, I'll go. But if it was anything else, you were going to college. Do you, do, what was the plan? Yeah, it, it was. It was probably about the first round, first or second round. If not, and if I didn't get, you know, the 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 money I wanted, you know, all that all that stuff played sure. a part of it, you know. Yeah. Um, then I would have went and played somewhere. So I know in high school you played you, you played football and baseball. Uh, growing up or in high school, did you play any? Did you play basketball or any other sports? All the way up to eighth grade, I played all three sports. And then I had went to um, McGill, too, and sat out my ninth grade year because I was uh, um, ineligible. You know, I moved from a different district. So okay. then I just played both sports So going through it. I, I, very important. When I when I saw you last week in uh, Sugar Land, you had on a Mobile T-shirt. Like, you're proud of Mobile. Yeah. And, and, and there's a lot of good reason oh, to be. <laughs> Mobile has a – ton produces a ton of athletes oh absolutely and you know the, the most famous one is, is hank aaron sure i mean and but blaine Krim, who, oh, who, who told us who yeah. told us he was, you guys played together in little league yeah we played like one or two years i played up with him uh-huh how old were you Obama. was he he's old is he older than you i think he may be 24 he ain't 24 25 he ain't too much older and you, i'm about to turn 24 too so it's around about around the same you know oh there's well, a lot of athletes out there. my boy uh Jalen tolbert um he with the cowboys now you yeah, got yeah drafted yeah that's my good friend man hey um one of my favorite rangers he never played for the rangers but one of my favorite guys i've ever met in spring training was from mobile destin hood do you know destin yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know no one, but I know of them. Like I, okay. I know. You guys are a lot. He alike. played both sports. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but yeah, he was a he was a two sport athlete. He he had committed to Alabama as part of like one of Saban's first big recruiting classes, <laughs> and was a wide receiver. Yeah. Um. He was. I think. He, I think the Marlins took him in the second round. So I think he got second second round money and and, and became a, a a ball player. Never played in the majors, as far as I know. But man, what a good guy. Good, right. good guy. But anyway, Mo- Mobile. I've been there a couple times. Great, great little town. Great. It's not a little town. Great town. I mean, there's a lot of pride there for you, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So I gotta ask you this. Everybody knows how athletic Bubba Thompson is <laughs> because you were two sport athlete. Guys like you that were were great athletes in baseball. Did you pitch at all when you were in high school? Pitch? No, I didn't pitch in high school. No. <laughs> No, you didn't. Okay, you stayed away from it. It's funny oh, yeah, when you yeah. ask the pitchers that. Sometimes the pitchers were pretty good hitters in high school also. But I always oh, wanted yeah. to go the opposite way. You know, when you're one of the best players on the team, yeah. or the best player in his case on the team, obviously, you always wonder, did you did you throw any? Did you get up there and get on the mound and throw a little? Yeah, I ain't never, you know, got up on that mound. 
Okay, so now stay on the grass. <laughs> I, okay, you got some explaining here because I want I want to know this. So when you when you grow up, folks that don't know in Alabama, when you grow up in Alabama, you are either an Auburn fan or you are a University of Alabama fan. Yeah, Bubba, you committed to Auburn, and then you changed your commitment to Alabama before yeah. signing with the Rangers. You need to explain who is your allegiance to, and what's your family <laughs> breakdown of that allegiance. Uh man, I always I was always you know Auburn fan group as Auburn fan man. Really? Yeah, my sister, my oldest sister, she went to Auburn. So, um, and then in tenth grade, you know you always want to go to your hometown school. You know, in tenth grade they end up offering me, and I had committed. You know, um, at a young age, but just baseball. So just going through it, knowing what I'm going to have to have, you know, the scholarships and everything, not really knowing um, that they don't give full scholarships and everything like that. So, and then playing the rest of my, at the 10th grade, then playing the rest of my high school, uh, going through my offers and everything, I just had to pick the best one that uh, that they was going to offer me. So Auburn didn't go up any, Alabama was right there. You know, they offered me a good amount of bit of uh, a scholarship. And, and at the end of the day, I knew where I was going. So I chose Alabama. That's a great answer. Hey, yeah. it's financial. I mean, but, who's going yeah, who's going to pay for more? Hey, I've got to yeah, pay for yeah. college here in a couple of years, and so do you. And yours yours is pressing. Yeah, mine's pressing. I don't. Know. That's that's a great answer. I mean, look, it, it, it's not that he didn't love Auburn, but when someone's going to pay for more school, that helps out mom and dad too. You don't have to take out student loans. Right. That's that's where you're going to do it. Now, did you talk to them about <laughs> playing football? Oh, I went to a, a camp and everything. They had ended up just telling me they already had commitments and all that good stuff. So. You know, we got to keep it moving. Well, but like football, football coaches are notorious for for making other sports pay for scholarships and then taking their players. Absolutely. You know, TCU's yeah. done it with track and field, and and they did it with a couple of baseball players too. But I was just wondering if like you knew if you had gone to Alabama, if like you would have a chance to to walk on or or, or play football. Something like if that. I if I did go to Alabama. Or if I didn't, if I went to another school and played both, you know, I probably most likely would have went out there and, and tried to do some. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Did, did I hear a story that you were watching, getting ready to sign, or maybe you were the draft was about to happen, and you were watching, sitting with a scout or somebody in a restaurant, and somebody on TV got hurt in football, and you said baseball is my future or something? Did I? Did, am I just remembering no, something? Oh, no. <laughs> I ain't never heard. I don't know about that. Okay, I'm I'm making it up then. Okay, I I just it's a thought good story, John. Yeah, it's a good story I made up about about uh, Leslie A. Thompson. By the way, that's the full name, right? Leslie A. Thompson. Are you the fourth? I'm the fourth. Fourth, yes, sir. You're the fourth. Okay. And so, God, God willing, there will be a fifth. <laughs> huh? God willing, there will be a fifth. <laughs> We're gonna see, man. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see if I'm gonna keep it going or what, what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I got some time though. I got you know some I mean? time to think. I can't rush it. Now. You you see a junior a lot. You see a, a third. Occasionally you see a fourth. But I don't. I don't know that I've seen a fifth. Yeah. I don't know that I've seen a V man, next so, to anybody's we name. Did, man, you got to be different, man. I don't know. I might. I might. Ah. I might keep going, man. You got to motivate. Motivate. Yeah. Keep going, man. I mean, it's not, you got a good family, man. You got to keep it going. Absolutely. I love that name, too. That's a great name. So, you know, besides Auburn and Alabama, what other schools did you consider? Was there anybody else that, that you thought about? Uh, I really wanted to uh, – Tennessee was the main one. Can you see? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got you. Yeah, you, that's okay. Uh, Tennessee? Yeah, man, I really wanted to go to Tennessee for both. Um, right there – the, at the draft, uh, trying to figure out if I was going to go in the draft or not, man. It, it, we had went through that little, you know, thing. Uh, but Tennessee was the main one that I wanted to go play both that. Yeah. That I could fit in, you know. I, it was a good fit for me, I feel like. So, that's the main one. Do you think you would have been a college quarterback or would they <laughs> have you try something else? No, nah, man. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a throwing quarterback, man. I throw first. You might think I run, but I throw for man. Thirty-eight so TDs, I think I man. Fit, I would have fit in, huh? He threw for thirty-eight TDs. <laughs> I know. I heard yeah, the I stats. People, man, people laugh, man, when I say I'm a throwing quarterback first. I don't run first, man. I throw. So you weren't, they you say, weren't, no, nah, no, nah. huh? You, you weren't dual threat. You were, 
You were a drop back passer. Yes, sir. And then if he I had, had wheels. To, run. Okay. Yeah. He had the wheels, though. Go through your progressions, don't see anybody, then you take off. Then you can take off. There you I go. I got you. I got you. But all of this that, made me. all <laughs> of that is a moot point because you were taken in the first round, 26th overall by the Texas Rangers. You were actually in studio for the draft. We both remember watching it. There's a picture of you on the phone. You can't, you can't see <clears> that picture. You can't see it right over there. There's a picture of him on the phone when he got the call. So how did that – How did did they invite you? Um, what? Did, how did that all progress where you, you ended up going? Was it New York? Uh, here at Reynolds, he had called me and said, hey, we want you to come out here, you know, and that's when I knew, like, hey, I might, you know, I'm most likely going to be getting picked in the first round and – Went out there. It was a blessing, man. To, you know, it's a lot of people in this world, and to be one of the select few to be over there, um, it was a blessing, man. So, but we got to keep it going. We ain't done yet. Not done. I, yep, you got it. You're setting yourself up to to make the big leagues one way or the other. That's for yeah. sure. That's yeah. where you're at right now. Sure. Let me let me ask you this: Were there any other teams during that day when you're sitting in the studio? Rangers, obviously. Were there any other teams you thought maybe might be taking you somewhere earlier? Oh, uh, yeah, I had a few ideas, man, but uh, you know how the draft is. Once the draft starts, you don't, you don't know what, who. Yeah. You you never know. You're just sitting there, you know, waiting for a call. So as long as you get that call, it's a blessing, man. But, yeah, yeah. once that draft starts, you don't know who's going to get picked. Somebody get picked here, then they pick some, and then, you know, you go higher or you go later. You never know. Who who called you? Yeah, who's I mean, on the phone with the, you? the Rangers had a representative uh, there. Kill Fag, I think, um, called. Okay, it's been a while. It's been a while, but I think <laughs> yeah, I think I was on the phone with him. Okay, all right. So now we're gonna get into some some easier ones and more fun one. What is your favorite type of food? Are you a pizza guy? Ooh, Are you man? I'm an all around type of guy, man. I like I like everything. I don't settle on you know one thing. Um, I mean, seafood, food, barbecue, I take all that, you know. Yeah. Now, <laughs> hey, Mobile's got oh, some good bet. food. Oh, I bet Mobile does because, uh, you're close to the you're right there, the bay and oh the man, Gulf. yeah, oh, it's the bay, yeah. I'm a seafood <laughs> nut too. I could get some good seafood. How about is there a fast food place that you really like? One of your favorite fast food joints, fast food, man. Let me think. Uh, I mean, Chick Fil A is a go-to. You know, that's for everybody. Fast food. It's a lot of fast foods out there, uh, but they about hit. all the same. That's they about all the same. You know? Yeah, Bubba, Bubba, Bubba's body is a temple. I mean, yeah. yeah. He, he, oh, I'm not. I'm he, not. Yeah, he's not hitting many drive-throughs. <laughs> I don't think. I think he's. Oh no! Or can you eat whatever you want, and it just you just don't gain the weight? Man, I try. Man, I mean, I try to eat. Uh, but I don't gain no weight, man. So I try to help. enjoy it while you can. Oh yeah, enjoy. for sure, man. Enjoy so, it. So while you can, can. you can go to you can go you can go to Dairy Queen after the game and eat a blizzard and you're go to bed and nothing, huh? Yeah. No pounds. Yeah, I, I do that. I get some ice cream here and there, man. But we got we play every day, so. <laughs> Anything that'll get me, you know, the feeling good the next day. Yeah, well, I, I, I always, I always say this. I, I've said it on this podcast, baseball players eat so much; it's unbelievable how much they food burn you guys a lot eat. of energy. You guys are always eating, always. Oh yeah, they take care of us too at the field, man. Making sure we have everything, you know, that we ain't, we ain't never hungry. So that's a good. Uh, thing. So your last food question. What is your favorite home cooked meal, and who cooks it? Is it mom, grandma, girlfriend, Dad, whatever? You... Dads can cook. Yeah, dads can cook. What's your favorite home cooked meal, and who cooks it? Probably my mama, man. Uh, macaroni and cheese, green cornbread, either fried pork chops or or chicken, mm. baked chicken. Um, that's the main one. That's the first thing that come to my head, man. <laughs> solid stuff, though. Yes, that's sir. all solid right there, man. You can put you can put anything with the size. It, it can be anything. It ain't got to be pork chops. It can be anything, you know, that main side. So it could be spam as long as you got your sides. Your sides. And mom's, got, oh. mom's got the recipe. <laughs> you said spam. 
Yeah. Spam, man. <laughs> I'm, you said any you uh, said anything as long as you got the side, so I thought spam. spam uh, fried uh, bologna. Yeah, you know. I got you. Yeah, anything. But mama's the cook. Mama can get everything cooked. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, that's last good. one. No. This is one of our fun ones that we always end on, and we've got some great ones that go with it. You'll have to give them some 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 cred about it. it the question is, what's something that nobody knows about you? And some of the great answers, uh, Jack Leiter, don't know if you knew this, he can't stand peanut butter. He hates peanut butter. Uh, we've got, uh, we got uh, Brock Burke, who you know Brock Burke. Brock Burke, uh, he, yeah. he sleepwalks, walks in his sleep and does that. Sleepwalk? Yeah. Hey, you got Davis Wenzel with you. What do you ask Davis Wenzel when you see him next time? Ask him about his finger he got chopped off. He got a finger chopped off. That's oh, for real? Yeah. You need to ask him about it when you get to the field tonight. What is something man. that nobody knows about Bubba Thompson? Man, it ain't too much, man. It ain't too much. Uh, <laughs> You're an open book. Really, though, man. I couldn't tell you. I mean, I couldn't tell you. It's Nobody okay if you know. huh? It's okay if you can't think of one. What was Josh Smith wants to be a rock star? Yeah. He yeah. wants to be a rock star. Blaine Blaine Krim right. hit naked. Or he walked Yeah, out. yeah. Blaine Krim used to hit naked and oh, run around really? his house naked hitting okay, the ball. Okay, okay, I got one. You got Uh-oh. one. All right. Nudity sparked this. When I was little, man, it's still right now, man, I always wanted my fishing show, my own fishing show, man. Oh, that's awesome. That's cool. Yes, I like that. Yes, sir. Yeah. So you love to fish. What'd you say? So you love to fish. Oh, yeah. Fish and hunt, man. So I always wanted, you know, my own fishing show and hunting show. But I think I'm I'm, I'm transcending, you know, more to a, a fishing show. So we'll see. So what, 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 what do you go out in the, do you go out in the bay? Where do you fish? Uh-huh. Bay, bass, you know, ponds. Uh, but I love that salt water, though. What's the what's your what's your bi- best catch ever? What's the biggest fish you've ever yeah, brought? It's in? probably a red. I ain't got too too big. Probably a red fish. They so what? Pretty good, man. What do you think? What do you think weight wise? It was probably uh, I, I didn't weigh him, but he was probably about a twenty two inch. Okay, all right, that's a big fish. Nice size and for a red fish. That's a big fish. Oh my gosh. I, I like to fish too. I don't get to do it much. Are you guys getting to do it much around Round Rock? I know Wenzel was a fish. He likes he, to he fish. He likes to fish. Yeah. You get out with them, or get, you get out with anybody and do a little fishing? Not really, man. You know we on we moving, and and when I get yeah. off that, I'm trying to rest my legs <laughs> and rest all and rest my body. So I would love to, but we just be moving around and stuff like that all the time, man. Well, so and, and I got time in the future. That's you right. got and you got to get up early. If you go go fish this time of year, yeah, no kidding, it's, it's too hot now. It's too hot yeah, to go out there. Play, now. Yeah. yeah, I hit them with that top water. <laughs> so, what are you hunting? You hunting deer or you bird hunter? What do you hunt? Oh, whitetail. Whitetail. All right, yeah. all right, that's all right. good stuff. I got a spot. You come when you get up to Texas. We'll off season. We'll I'll take you somewhere. We'll get a deer. Let's do it. I get that bow out, man. I get that bow, man. Only way I'm killing a deer with a bow is if it walks up next to me and I beat the heck out of it. I can't shoot a bow. <laughs> I'm going I'm to call him up. I'm going to call him up. <laughs> Do it. Anything else? No, we're good here. Hey, Bubba, we can't tell you how much we appreciate you stopping down. I know you, you, you're getting ready to go out to the ball field probably here in a couple of hours. Taking the time uh, to do that, we really appreciate it. And uh, do want to thank you for coming on, bud. Thank you all, man. Thank you all. It's been a pleasure, man. All hey. right. We're going to see you soon. I yes, think. sir. Let's do it. Absolutely. All right, Bye, now. That's Bubba Thompson, outfielder for the Texas Rangers, joining us from Round Rock, Texas. Bubba, thanks a lot. Roxo Media House is a streaming and production company located in Fort Worth, Texas. From video to podcast production and social media broadcasting, Roxo Media House strives to deliver a dynamic media experience for clients and fans. With 15 shows, we have something for the whole family. Join the Roxo Media community today. All right, that was Bubba Thompson. Thanks, Bubba, for coming on. Now it's time to go down in the bus leagues. Jeff, we got to get under this minor league system. Uh, we're going to start it down. Needs to go down. First of all, before we even go there, you got to look at what these what these teams are doing on uh, all together. I, we added this up last week. Yeah. To add it up, we're added up this week all the way across the system. Besides the big leagues, one hundred and three and eighty two is the record in the minor leagues. That'll work. 
You take a 500 major league team and you go league-wide organization, including the big leagues, this is a team, this is an organization that is 127 and 106. So winning is what they are preaching everywhere, and they're doing it. Yeah, and I think I think the Arizona Complex League is about to start up. That's the uh, all the young kids that have been in an extended um, the babies. Anyway, yeah, so I think I think um, you know there's there you, you never know what you're going to get out of the extended league, right? But um, it, it's it's there's some talent down there too, so we'll have to start watching them. Yep. Let's go to down east. Down east is 22 and 24. They're six and four in their last team uh, last ten. They've won a game. Um, S- sort of the same people we've been talking about down in Down East. Mm. Uh, Acosta's been doing pretty well. Um, he's uh, hitting two fifty seven. Um, Osuna is the one that's really just stayed consistent down there. Sure. Um, sure. Ozuna uh, is hitting three eighteen. He's got a nine thirty two OPS. Um, you know this this guy wasn't on my radar coming in, but he he's young. W- w- where is he from? Well, he, he he's a Latin guy. He was part of a, a recent class, and uh, you know you. That's what happens. Guys get on guys get on radars, you know, yep. the, with performances and being consistent. And uh, you know, he he's he's not a top thirty guy, um, but you know, he's 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 playing really well on a on a team that that has a lot of talent. Um, so anyway, you know, hey, keep an eye on him. Uh, Winston Santos. That's is a, the one you got to talk about. That, that you gotta you gotta watch. Uh, you know, he had a great start the other day. He he popped into the the Baseball America top thirty rankings. Right, um, young guy. Obviously, he, he's he's got the stuff to dominate at, at that level. Ten Ks. Um, anyway, just you know an, another another name to watch, and and people are watching him because you know Baseball America grabbed him and, and put him in their top twenty. So I think he's I think he's twentieth. Getting some comparisons, kind of to a, he's kind not a huge guy. Um, some sort of some Ronnie Henriquez is something that I've read about so far. He's he's two and zero with three point seven five ERA. He's got forty Ks and thirty six innings pitch. But the other night is when everybody went, "Whoa, are you watching this?" He struck out ten and in seven innings, scoreless. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is a guy also like Osuna um, popped on my radar this week. So it's something <laughs> when I get a guy on my radar, somewhere where, no matter where he comes from, somebody points him out on Twitter, then I start watching to see what's going on, and, and it's fun to watch going there. Hickory. High A, that's High A. Hickory's twenty-seven and nineteen, seven and three in their last ten. They did lose last night. Um, I, I tell you, somebody that's kind of going up, that's not that under the radar, that's done pretty well is is uh, Thomas. Sa- and you say Sajesi is what Correct. you say. Yeah, Sajesi. He's hitting two seventy-six. Um, he was that the part of that draft that that uh, twenty twenty-five round draft. Right. He was the fifth rounder that was sure. taken. He was sure. going to go to Pepperdine. Um, I've been calling him Sagisi until I asked him in spring training. I think everybody had been. Yeah. yeah, and he says it's Sajacy. Sajacy yeah. is how you and say. And he prefers it. he prefers to be in print. He likes his name to be Thomas too, yeah. and not Tommy. So so anyway, um, he he's a guy. You know, Carlos Cardoza is the manager at Hickory. Uh, was the was the Hickory at Down East, the manager at Down East last year? Sajacy made his professional debut there. They moved up together. Right. Um. And and Carlos said that that like last year. So, so JC kind of started slow, but this was about the time that he started heating up. And if you look at his April statistics, I think he hit like 230, 235. Um, he's hitting around 300. This uh, he hit 300 in May, right? Around 300. So he is starting to heat up. And you know, there there are a lot of lot of middle infielders on that team. A lot of short stops. Uh, he's playing. He's playing some third base. He's playing some second. But um, you know, fifth fifth round pick. You know, in in a in a strike sh- or in a COVID shortened season. Yeah. To be taken in the fifth round, yeah, you, you were something. Yeah, and it's you know he he's definitely a, a a guy to keep an eye on. I know they have a ton of shortstops and everything, but you 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 never you never know. Yeah, you never know. And um, again, a fifth round pick, you you got to get something. Carter, right. Carter's the same. Two eighty three. He's got eight twenty one OPS. Or we we've said enough over and over about Evan yeah, Carter. Z- Zavala's doing well. Zavala's doing really good. Zavala Zavala's the one that's really kind of uh, he had a slow start, although Very the slow. walks were there. Uh, starting off, but he's really – that's somebody I think – we we talked to uh, Ross the other day. Mm. Uh, they don't know if Evan will get up to double A, but they do Aaron, right? They think Aaron will – He's got a chance. I mean, he's older. Uh, yeah, he's a college you know, he's a kid. college hitter, great, great college player. Uh, Acuna is another guy that Ross talked about. And, um, yeah. 
You know, oh my just, gosh! Just hitting the ball, hitting the ball real hard, doing doing a lot of great Got things. One point one something OPS. Yeah, and, and he he missed a lot of time in April, but uh, he had a he had a pretty good May. Yeah, uh, this guy's yeah. this kid's a stud. We saw him uh, in spring training. Uh, this is a kid. Um, I, I was impressed watching him, watching him just back on the backfields, hitting the ball, the ball. Look, there's a different sound that comes off some bats. It just yeah. is. I mean, there's, there's no way to hide that. I can't explain it to you. You just have to hear it to do it. But but that kid's got, got yeah, some pop. You know, and he's the little brother of Ronald. And, you know, there's obviously <clears throat> talent driven yeah, from that yeah. family tree. There's some of the he, blood. But, you know, he's built like a fire hydrant. I mean, oh, he, my gosh. Just, you just, oh, man. But um, he, so he, he's a little shorter than Ronald. Um I think he, I think he's, he has no neck. Right. Yeah, that's how muscular he is. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's fast. He, he's a very good defensive player. There's a lot of reason to be excited about him. And one thing that, that the Rangers are wondering about is, is why, why hasn't Acuna, why hasn't the buzz with Acuna popped? You know, cause yep. he's, he's, he is, you know, the, the next Acuna and he's a really, really good player and he's a top 10 prospect for the Rangers. It's just kind of, kind of interesting that he, he hasn't, uh, isn't drawing more attention. But you know what? He will. Yeah, he's he got to. Sometimes you got to get up to Double A AA and Triple A before people really pay attention. Mm-hmm. Young kids for, for everybody in 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 a football town like Texas. I didn't say that. Never mind. Uh, in 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 DFW Metroplex, where the Rangers can sometimes take a back seat. You got to get nerds go down to the minor leagues and pick up. You and I love the minor yeah. leaguers. I'm a big minor league nerd guy. So, but they, they, these are guys I watch them. It's fun to watch a kid go. From being drafted, you watch him play, you meet him, and then when he gets to the big leagues, it's fun to watch. I yeah. mean, it, it's a great thing to watch homegrown talent. Well, and uh, Acuna, he didn't, he wasn't a huge signing inter- internationally. He didn't right. sign for a ton of money. I think the Rangers got him for a hundred thousand, but he was he had a deal lined up. I believe, if I'm remembering the story, he had a deal lined up with the Braves yeah. so that he could follow be his in brother. the organization with his brother. But then the Braves got in trouble. Remember, because they had that, oh, that that's big, right. that big scandal, and they couldn't sign players for any for for a certain amount of money, and so he got more money from the Rangers and ended up going there. And 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 the Rangers are the ones that can benefit. They, these these guys are like we said, they're currency. There's a lot of them, and it, it's good to keep an eye yeah. on it. They're going to be used one way or another. And there, there's a lot of guys that are going to play in the big leagues that are in this organization, whether it's with Texas or not, you don't know, but there, right. there are big leaguers all over. There are, there are Rangers draftees and, and signees all over the major leagues. Absolutely. You know, I know they get dragged for having lousy drafts and there's a lot of reason for that, but there are major league players who the all Rangers over. drafted and are, are performing well in the majors. Frisco, double A. Frisco's 25 and 20, five and five in the last 10 games, one, two. Uh, who are we going to talk about there? Well, you talk about this guy for one of them. Krim yeah, is Blaine Krim. I'm telling you, he uh, he's batting, I think, what, 314, 10 home runs, 950 OPS. Yeah. He's, he's doing what Blaine Krim does. Blaine right. Krim hits, guys. I mean, that's that's what he does. And, you know, with Bubba Thompson. <laughs> that's right. But if, if, you know, if you talk about first base defense and, and you know that's an area where Nate Lowe has struggled. Um, I'm not saying that Blaine Krim is going to re- replace Nate Lowe, um, but I think that Blaine Krim's probably due for for a promotion here soon. Yep. To Triple A, which gets him a step closer. He's out in the 40 man. That's all right. He made a he made an impression during minor league camp. You know, remember minor league camp started during the lockout. Right. And so all the Rangers executives and coaches got to get to know a lot of these guys, and they got to know Blaine Krim. And you know, hard player, lot, terrific bat to ball skills. Right. Obviously has power. He's he's really worked on his swing. Um, look, he's hit everywhere. Everywhere he's been, he's hit. Right. And and you gotta you gotta see it. You, you gotta see it till he stops it. And then then you know I I know that there's this uh, and uh, stigma about right handed hitting first baseman. They gotta go up there and destroy major league pitching. I mean think. Think of all the good first basemen in history. Most of them are left-handed, right? Uh, left-handed hitters. Uh, you know, trying to think of right-handed hitters right now. It's it's a Brayu, right? Um, I had somebody else today, and it fell out of my head. But um, I guess Miguel Cabrera, right-handed yeah. hitter. You know, that those those are kind of extremes. Those are MVP winners. But I, you know, I just think if you can get up and hit and be a productive player, exactly, you, you're going to find a spot for you. Yep. It, whether it's outfield or first base doing that. Duran, obviously, still hitting 315 at 938. Um, I think if you're going to go up to uh, 
Ezekiel Duran. Although Josh Smith's getting all the love from the Joey Gallo trade right now, Duran is really tearing up Double A. He is, he, you know, leads all the major, all all, all the minors and doubles. He's hitting home runs. Yeah. Um, you know, that that trade, um, you know, I mean, Glenn Otto yeah. is, is doing really well in the in the Rangers rotation. Right. Hello. After Eli Tre White saved him, he he was Tre good. Trevor Hover at 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 Hickory has he started slow like Zavala did, but. But the base the baseline was there because he was having really good at bats, and now he started to heat up. So, I mean this this trade, you know, Ra Rangers pro scouting department the last few years has been outstanding. Yep, and that that's not just the players they've acquired; it's players they've signed. You know, like they identified Lance Lynn, for instance. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. the, they're just they're on a real good roll right now. Martin and Perkins. um, uh, you know, it's um, it's 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 good to see. You know. It, Whatever has happened in scouting and, and development and player development, things are trending the right way. You talked to Jack Leiter. I did. What have you got coming up? Well, I, I wrote it Sunday. I wrote a story on on Jack Sunday. You know, he had a 5.91 ERA. That's what it is right now as a, as of this recording. Um, you know, the the number one, the number two overall pick, the savior of the Rangers rotation, isn't supposed to have a 5.91 ERA, but you know, you you. you Read the story at, at rangersaday.com, five ninety nine a month for sixty dollars a year, and um, nobody's worried about this guy. Nope. He's doing all the things right. He, he he's just putting the, the the puzzle together, and um, it's it's it, it's different. The baseball is the same, but it's it's different because you know, for instance, uh, a guy who in the SEC he might have had to he might have faced the in, in college who was a number three hitter. Well, now he might be batting eight, eighth or ninth. Right and 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 now, that's an out that, that Jack Leiter has to get, you yep. know, or is expected to get. He's he's not the the guy. Not, the guy's not going to do damage in the middle of the order. And the thing is that that while the hitter maybe hasn't gotten better, Jack Leiter has. Right. And so it, it's it's interesting to to just listen to what he said, read what he said, read what Jeff Andrews, a great pitching coach, uh, has to say. So <laughs> they have no concerns. Go check out that story. Um, at, at, at Rangers today. Yeah, it was um, good. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was amazed. I mean, I wasn't either because I saw him in person. Mm -hmm. And even though the, he gave up a couple of runs when I was there, his stuff bites. It does, it plays so well to watch, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, uh, uh, doing that. So I wasn't worried at all either. But the Rangers are just not concerned. It's yeah. like this is his first pro season. Right. I mean, he's facing, you're right, that double A hitters. You take a double A team and go in the SEC, and they run away with the SEC. Sure, I mean, sure. it's not even a close call. Yeah. It's like the people in the NFL that say, "Oh, get an All Star NFL team or an NFL team to play the All Star college teams." Like they're going to get, you know, yeah. Alabama could beat the worst team, and yeah. no, they're not. They're going to get driven away by fifty points yeah. uh, playing even the worst team in the NFL. They're just a different level. It's, right. it's right. even at double A, it's just different players than in the yeah, SEC. And an interesting point that I was brought up the other day is, you know, lighter didn't have the 2020 season right that's right so really last year was was his first full his only full college season you right know? and and he's still learning but uh you know he's got the pedigree he, he's got the level head and um i don't think there's anything to worry about no I mean, you, you've got a dad that's going to tell him too that that knows you're going to get rocked every once in a while you've got to your thing is to learn where and when you have to change it up what you got to do to go through yeah. the line i'm not worried about jack Ladder at all okay. you see what he's capable of round rock triple a round rocks 29 and 19 they're the best team in the minor league system right now they're six and four over the last 10 they did went lose last night we talked to bubba about that uh you know interesting question uh, oh, of course, Bubba, who's still hitting well down there. Oh, yeah. He's doing good. Tavares, everyone wondered when Josh Smith came up, uh, everyone thought, well, if they're going to bring up an outfielder, why not bring up Tavares? They brought up uh, Zach Rex. They brought up Rex again. Yes. Um, I could not hear on the third row listening uh -huh. to Woody who talks about like this. They're talking. You heard it. What was the explanation? Why Rex over Tavares? Well, I mean, Zach, Zach Rex was the the – Pacific Coast League Player of the Week. Right, I mean, that, that, he had a huge week, and I know they were in Albuquerque where the ball flies, but still, he had a he had a big week. Uh, you know, when they promote somebody, they want him to be on the upswing. Sure. And right now, Leody Tavares is not on the upswing. He's he's still hitting. Uh, he went over five last night. I think it dropped its average to two ninety. Um, he's got some things he's working through, but they want him. <clears throat> they just want to catch him. They they, you know, I I guess he was super hot in April, uh, but they did they wanted to see it. A little bit more, sure. Um, so they they missed their chance to to get him on the upswing there. But you know the thing is that that has been communicated to Leody. 
you can't just flip a switch. You right. Know? You you got to be there every day. You can't get called up to the major leagues and be like, oh, okay, I can turn it back on. No, no, no. That, that that's not going to happen. And right. And so he need, he does need to to he's leveling out. Maybe maybe, um, you know, the the hot start has, has finally right cool cooled down a little, which which was always going to happen. He wasn't going to hit 400, but um, if he, if he gets hot again. And if it can coincide when when Brad Miller comes off the, the injured list, uh, there, a couple moves could be made right. to, to make room for him. But he has to get hot again. He has to get hot again. And and that that's the whole deal. And Rex, like you said, is an is an easier decision if you're going to have some, someone back down and he's struggling. When I think when Tavares gets here, they want to see Tavares stay up here for a little while. Yeah, they, they don't want they don't want someone to fill in for the weekend when someone's been getting ready to come off the the, the IL or be here for ten days. That's somebody they want to see, kind of the way they did with. Uh, I'm going back. Smith's not there anymore. Uh, kind of with Josh Smith. I, I think they want to see him here a little bit longer. Um, so I, I get it. I under I understand now. Rex, he's hot. You want to get the hot yeah. bat. It's because at the big league level, when they're 500, they don't want to lose games. Well, yeah, and you know another thing, they don't want Leo Tavares to be a bench player. No. They want him to come up and have an everyday an everyday role or a regular role. Um, Zach Rex, I don't know that he is in the same the same category. Neither there. is Eli White. And and you know yeah and and maybe maybe that's the thing. Maybe if 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 this these last couple of games haven't sparked Eli White and he he doesn't do a little more, maybe that's the move. But yep. um, again, Tavares has to has to show a little something more here. Okay. Anything else? I mean, pitching wise, down in, uh, in 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 Round Rock, you you still got Win. I didn't see what he did his last start out. Um, you know, AJ Alexi hasn't been stellar down there. Um, yeah. So, anyone else before we get out of here? Yeah, uh, not no. Uh, I I think you know, and one one thing about the, the, that league and this year the Texas League is that they're offense driven. Yeah. Um. You know, and you and. In the Pacific Coast League, you play at places like Albuquerque and, and Reno, which are higher elevation. The ball flies. Las Vegas, um, Las, Las Vegas, it's it's so hot and the air is so thin. It's like Arizona. Right. Uh, the, the the ball will will fly there too. So there are there are pl- places where your your what how how your numbers can be skewed by by the ballpark factors. And sure. I think that's happened a couple times this season. But again. Um, as long as those guys, those top pitchers, are focused on what got them to AAA in the first place, that's what's going to get them to the major leagues. They don't have to do anything different. Exactly. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be it for this one. Next week, Jeff's heading out of town this week. That's right. That's right. I'm actually going to take a vacation. Take a vacation. I'm going to take Kathy this weekend. We're going to do something. I'll be dropping a lot of these old videos, guys. I'll be getting them back out, tweeting them out. You'll still want to get caught up on all of these. I'll, I'll try to have every episode at least once tweeted out there uh, and get a retweet. You're still going to do a little bit of writing if you can yeah. get Jen to let you. I mean, <laughs> I understand. Uh, look. Well, I'm, I'm going to have a busy couple of days here. I'm going to try to work ahead, <clears throat> work ahead so that I don't have to work on vacation, but... Um, there will be there will be stuff. There probably there will not be a daily newsletter sure. uh, at rangerstoday.com, but the plan is to have a minor league notebook, uh, uh, the Friday on the farm feature, and a and a Sunday read. So, uh, and then if there's huge news, then absolutely. Am, the, the family understands that I need to I need to sit down for a couple hours and knock out a story. Yep, and 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 in that case, something like that. If there was some sort of press conference or anything, I can jump out to yeah, the ballpark, sure. get it get it covered, and at least get a video of it and get it out, guys. Yeah. So look, coverage comes even when we're on vacation, although it may not be daily. Look, during the off season, it's going too, even when the the season's not even going on. Right. Have a good vacation. Be Thank safe. You. I appreciate you. Do that. Anything before we close it? Nope. Just uh, rangerstoday dot com five nine 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 a month, sixty dollars a year, thirty five dollars for six months, uh, which at this point now gets into the off season. So, um, Chris so, Henderson sub- on the field the other day told me he goes, "I pay the sixty bucks. I love it." Subscribe. So, yeah. like Chris, subscribe. It's so worth it, guys. Guys. Not next week, but until the week after that, we'll see you at the yard. Roxo Media House.